Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Quick reminder that my 100,000 subscriber giveaway is still running and will be running through the beginning of November. So you can check out my last video if you would like to get in on that. We've got bunches of fun prizes to give away to you guys. Thank you so much for making that even possible. Today, as promised in that video, I'm going to be working with these Peerless watercolors. I've just picked out three colors that I'm going to be working with for this piece here. If you haven't seen my full review on Peerless watercolors, I'll go ahead and link that up in the card so you can check that out if you want to know more about these paints and all of that stuff. I really, really love them, and the wonderful people over at Peerless recently sent me this 40 color bonus pack, these extra large sheets for me to play with. What I usually like to do with sets with lots of colors like these is I pick out some sort of limited palette and allow it to be its own unique thing. So the yellow I'm using for this is a bit more of like a greenish gold almost is what it reminds me of. The blood red is like an alizarin crimson, really similar to that. And my blue is their neutral tint, which reminds me a lot of like a Payne's gray. You're going to notice lots of tiny little variations in light in this video, and that's mostly because I just didn't feel like using my studio lights today, so I'm only using natural light. So it was a bit of a cloudy day, so the sun was kind of coming in and out. I personally find the effect pretty relaxing. I don't know how you guys will feel about it, but I like it, so hopefully it's not uh, too annoying to you. When working with the Peerless watercolors before, I had definitely noticed that the colors tend to reactivate one another really easily. So when you're working on wet paper, those colors just tend to blend and be really soft and it can be difficult to get hard and sharp and precise edges and details sometimes when working with these, unless you're being very careful. And I wasn't really in the mood to be exceptionally careful when painting this. So what I ended up doing was intentionally allowing my colors to be very soft and to blend into one another and then I wanted to go in over my colored piece with um, a brush pen to kind of add some ink lines and I wanted to talk to you guys today about um, brush pens a little bit. Uh, it's October so lots of people are doing Inktober. I'm not but uh, it, it's been really fascinating to see what everybody is creating. And I went through that similar thing when you first find out about Inktober and you want to buy all the ink supplies. So I wanted microns and a dip pen and all kinds of ink and brush pens and um, calligraphy brushes and, you know, all that stuff. And I kind of did cycle through a few of those and tried out lots of things. But the brush pen was definitely the one that I enjoyed using the most, even though I kind of found it to be the most difficult because painting with a brush pen or even um, a regular brush, you have to have a lot more control over your lines and because I'm someone who uses brushes a lot anyway because I paint so much I found that the more time I spend painting every year when I come back to brush pens around October I find them easier and easier to use just because I've spent the whole year working with brushes anyway if that makes sense and this year in particular I've really been embracing the brush pen even though I've only been doing ink stuff personally and haven't been doing you know publicly sharing Inktober stuff. I have been working on some inky things and some of which you guys have seen already, but I really love brush pens. I feel like they can add a lot of style and a lot of variety to a piece, which you're going to see later on in this one. But I actually used to think that inking a piece, not for everyone, obviously, because lots of artists ink their work and it's amazing and beautiful. I need to stretch. Oh, but when I was a younger artist and I would be painting a piece, but I'd feel like it wasn't really coming together and I was missing something, sometimes I would think, oh, I'll just add some line work. And that used to feel like cheating to me because it felt like I was adding lines instead of working out the values and the proper contrast for my piece with just paint. So I avoided inking and adding line work to my pieces for a long time because it felt like cheating and I felt like it just flattened out my image by adding line work because I wasn't properly developing my values and my contrast on my own. So I ended up avoiding using uh, black ink for a long time because I, I didn't have a proper understanding or a fuller understanding, at least I'm still learning, I don't know everything, but I didn't have a very full understanding of um, how to establish values just with paint and I'm glad that I've taken the time to 
kind of learned that instead of um, adding line work, if that makes sense. But now that I feel more comfortable doing that, I've been able to enjoy adding line work to pieces more than I had in the past, just because I'm able to see it a bit differently. And now I'm just so in love with uh, the brush strokes that brush pens can provide and that variance. You can do really thick lines and really thin lines. And you can also, you'll see sometimes I kind of press my brush down against my paper to get like a dry brushing effect. There will be even more of that later on. But I just love what one tool can do to get me thick lines and thin lines. And the brush pen itself, this one is by Pentel, even the brush pen is going to be a little bit more limited than if you were just using um, a regular brush and a bottle of ink or some sort of dish with ink in it or however you want to you know, um, have your ink available, but using an actual brush, just a regular brush and ink, it's going to provide the greatest amount of variety because you can control how much ink is on your brush. When working with a brush pen, there is a barrel on the inside that is filled with ink and this one is refillable. So I have been um, filling this up as it empties, but because there is that barrel, there's kind of this constant feed of ink. Now it does vary a little bit. There are some times where it's a little bit drier because the flow kind of slows down and then you can squeeze the barrel to kind of prime that and it gets extra juicy. So there's sometimes that my ink flow was a little bit lighter and I was able to utilize that dry brushing effect a little bit more. And then when I would kind of prime the brush, my ink, my lines were much fuller and um, crisper and just, you know, super wet and juicy. And so you can get some variation with the brush pen, but to have the most control using a brush and ink is kind of the way to go for that. And then you can easily control when you're utilizing that dry brushing effect by just wiping off excess ink, or you can really load up your brush with tons of ink if you want to cover larger areas, and there's just lots and lots and lots of variety. Definitely the most variety when it comes to inking if you're just using a brush and ink, but some people prefer greater control, which is why you have, you know, the next tier of control would be like a brush pen. And then after that, maybe uh, a dip pen with a flexi nib. So there you can still get lots of line variety. And then maybe a more rigid dip pen, you know, where that nib isn't going to bend and flex as much. And you've got then your uh, felt tip fine liners like microns that are going to be pretty much a standard line width. Sometimes if you um, are very skilled, you can apply little bits of pressure to kind of change that. And you can still create varying line weights with a micron. Of course, you're just going to have to, you know, add that in yourself by going over certain areas. And it just kind of depends on what your preference is. And some people like to mix it up and do different things at different times. But generally, the whole point of this rambling is to just kind of share with you guys that I've been enjoying using ink a lot lately. I had originally planned to do a comic project for Inktober, and that only lasted about two of the ten pages I was planning to do, just because I was kind of noticing that the style I was using, I knew it wasn't something that I was going to want to stick to long term, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to dedicate the entire month to working on something that I can already kind of feel wasn't what I necessarily wanted stylistically. But I really, really enjoy this piece. I love how there's some larger shapes in the head and the hand, but also just some messier, finer details. There's something a little bit imperfect about the facial structure, like the nose is really pointy and the shape of the eye almost makes the cheek look a little puffy. There's something about the imperfection of the facial structure that I actually really love in this piece. So this is also going to be the piece that will be given away in my portion of the 100k celebratory giveaway thing. So you can check out, I'll leave a link in the description to enter that giveaway, but it's also in my last video. Please do check out Peerless Watercolors. There's a link down in the description. I think that I can still use the link where if you order through that link, if you wanted to purchase Peerless Watercolors, you can still get a free mystery sheet with your order. And that's a special um, affiliate link that Peerless and I have set up so it benefits me, but you also get some extra goodies too. All right, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.